morning, and welcome back to the basement. When I heard recently that I had perhaps a chance to contribute something for the influence he has exerted on our lives, I jumped at the chance. Building a library ladder, both classic and elegant looking, but entirely safe and functional. Let's talk. Okay, so now that we have all of our various rosettes, these are for each of the rungs. These are for the uh, brass cross pieces in the main ladder. These are for the brass pipe cross pieces in the brace. These are all part of the hinge mechanism. This will be the, the wear plate that the hinge plate rides hard against. It'll have a brass shaft penetrating through so that it, we're not rubbing uh, brass on wood. We'll be rubbing steel on brass for wear purposes. And there are the rosettes polished up and in place for this main part of the ladder. So I have figured out the perfect angle to set the blade to, to push this through on the sled and get this exact angled interface. Went through and did that on all four corners of each of these steps so that there's an angle cut both front and back. The next thing to do is to drill through here with a 3 8 inch bit. As I alluded to earlier, there's going to be this brass rod that's going to come across both sides and then there will be a, a wooden block here in the center. So as you tighten up the brass rod it will draw both sides of the ladder inward but will also provide an upward support in the middle of the step because of this triangle here. So, so what I do next is I go through with the 3 8 drill bit and drill through here at just a little bit of an angle to kind of come through this step at a 45 and then fabricate and install all the center braces which will be made of wood. Those will be glued and screwed and then install all of the brass tension rods. As you can see, this is just a brass tube, and the brass tube will be concealing quarter inch all thread. The actual tightening factor will be quarter inch all thread, but concealed by brass tubing, and then using a brass acorn nut on top of the brass rosette on the outside, so it will be decorative and pretty, but also strong. So here is where the hole comes through and it kind of slices into this step leaving a semicircular groove which will serve to locate this step. As long as this rod is in place the step cannot slide forward or back. So I just pre-cut all these pieces to the length I need to go along underneath the step. This is a piece of the step wood. You can kind of see how that will fit up under there. And then using the drill press I drilled the hole you know, at the same location in each one, just using a little stop to, to locate it. And now I want to bevel it off to basically bisect this hole and then taper to the ends. This happens to be the back taper. I just wanted to show how it's pretty simple to do this quick jig to the, it meets here, here, and there. The sliding of this piece determines how far over it's angled. So I just literally hold the piece visually in place where I want it, clamp this in place, and now it will produce all four with the exact same cut. And then I'll flip it around, figure out the angle that I want in here, readjust the jig, and cut all four of them that way. Here's what the second jig turned out to look like. So that leaves us with four perfectly identical bolsters. I guess I'm going to call these a bolster with the slot for the brass rod to lay in to locate against. All we have to do now is drill and countersink these and glue them to the bottom of each step. Of course where possible I'll be using traditional joinery methods and hardware. So I have these number six brass wood screws. Uh, I might prefer a number eight if I had it but these will definitely do the job. The glue really does most of the work. And in order to get the hole drilled just right, we'll be using this number six countersink. The actual uh, hole, the actual thread 
gripping hole is adjustable length as you can see I'll lock that down in the correct length but then this upper part of the countersink will make room both for the shaft of the screw and for the beveled head of the screw all in a single operation you can see that makes a nice perfectly shaped perfectly stepped hole for this screw so here I'm preparing these brass struts for going in there. First of all, I cut it to length, just kind of, you can tell where it's going to protrude into the wood, but not, not come out past the, uh, the face of the wood. I put the quarter inch rod inside the pipe before I bent it because that stops it from collapsing right here. But of course, once you've done the bend, you're not going to be able to push the rod through there. And now when I assemble, the ladder this will have to be assembled at the time that it gets all glued together so doing some final sanding before assembly and these grooves because they were done with a router they're fairly choppy see those chatter lines down in that groove so in order to sand them smooth just have a piece of sandpaper wrapped around a drill bit uh, which by experiment kind of found the right size this is a I think a 13 64ths, but I just found the right size that fits that concave real nicely and then just sand all these grooves. It's particularly important to sand these edges because once it's glued together, you're not going to be able to sand those edges very well. The uh, glue has set overnight, the glue is uh, done, and here we have the finished look on this side. Now at the moment, I only have four of these brass acorn nuts. Got these polished up real nice, they look good. <clears throat> I have more on the way, and when I get more, then on this side I'll replace these nuts with the brass ones. As you can see, I just kind of rough cut the threaded rod you know not being sure exactly how long it's going to need to be so with this nut in place I'll cut this off and then I can back this nut off and screw the the new acorn nut on and that side will be complete as well moving on I have this heavy brass pipe it's almost as heavy as a regular steel pipe it's very very solid and, and uh, strong I picked it up at a antique store. They had like two six foot lengths for seven dollars each or something. I do not know what they came from, but they're just wonderful for a purpose like this. Obviously it has a heavy, heavy tarnish on it. I, I think it's probably, you know, early ish twentieth century. So I need to take it to the buffer and buff all that off. Having done some of it in the past, I know that it's gonna be quite a job. This heavy tarnish does not want to come off. But I'll get that buffed out. And one of them is going to go across here and be this, this front rail that the platform rests on. And then this one will go across at the top and will be the bar that you lean against. And in a polished up, you know, gleaming brass, I think it will be quite attractive. And here the first one is in its polished state. So one more to go for this part of the ladder and there will be two of these <clears throat> on the other part of the ladder. So the way these bars work, the way this is going to attach, is I have just sanded this to 3.1 degrees. This ladder leg is canted inward 3.1 degrees. So setting this guide on the sander to 3.1 degrees and then sanding it here and so that gives you this the uh, the end of this profile now aligns with the, the uh, ladder rail now as of this instant the other side is perfectly flush this side is sticking out by what is that a 30 second so I will take this back to the sander in the very same orientation and take off just a smidgen more but as soon as that is flush, then this rosette 
will clamp will uh, go into this recess. This will have five or six holes and will be screwed into place. And then a piece of all thread will run through here and the pipe will be tightly clamped between these two opposing brass plates. So the pipe is attached to the plate, the plate is attached to the ladder, and that will lock this piece in place. So I decided to drill six holes. I used this carbide spot drill to place the six spots around this uh, rosette. And what I will do, this one I used the DRO, and it has a, a bolt circle function where you create a bolt circle and then you just tell it which hole you want to cut and then you reposition the table until it reads zero zero so you use that to align and then you bring the quill down and drill that little beginning hole having completed one of them I'll go ahead and put a wooden platen up here a wooden drilling surface and stick a little right angle block in it that I can nestle these brass plates up into the circle and then I can just use the centering uh, nature of the drill bit the the drill bit will follow that cone so all I have to do is get it pretty close to the place to, to rotate it where it belongs and then the drill will drill down through that hole without a problem and then frankly I'll use this one to create that one I'll just put this on top and use this as a guide to drill these circles but for the first one, we used the fancy electronic DRO and got them perfect to within, you know, a thousandth of an inch or whatever. So here we have it. I just cut this little uh, angled wooden block, screwed it to this wooden platen. And now this piece can just be held up in here and be rotated. It will keep the outside positioning, the outside spacing, the same. No matter where I rotate it, it's going to drill in the same ring. And all I have to do is just line up the bit with the you know with the starter cone that I just drilled which like I said it'll be kind of self-aligning I'll go ahead and drill the first one completely and then use the first one to drill the second one so now with the center holes drilled <clears throat> I have a countersink in here and through trial and error I found the perfect depth to where that screw lays flush and then I'm using the depth stop set that I can just pull it all the way down until that nut bottoms out against this bracket and then my depth of my holes is just right all right, so I've gone through and polished the heads of the 12 screws that will hold these in. And I need to drill the holes to the depth that these screws need. Now it's really important that I not drill too deep or I'll come through the other side. One of the easiest ways to control depth in a situation like this is to simply drill through a little wooden block like this and set your bit in the chuck of the drill so that your stick out is appropriate. So here I can just hold this up against this edge and I can see that I'm not going to drill all the way through. So I'll just use this little guide and then drill as, as deep as I can at that point against the guide and my hole will be deep enough. All right, and for the final brass insert bar, I need to fill up these ends. I don't want it to be a big gaping hole here. So I'm going to get a careful measurement on that and then we'll turn a brass plug to put in there. We'll leave it um, give or take a thousandth of an inch clearance and then insert it with some green Loctite, Loctite 680 which is a permanent uh, connection if there is five thousandths or less clearance. That will serve to give this a solid end and then we'll, we'll uh, bevel this a little bit so it's not a sharp edge and polish it up. In fact, maybe I'll give it a little decorative beading like I did with, with, the, with the rosettes. That would be a nice look. So we'll get the pipe itself ready, and then we'll work on how to attach the pipe. For turning a brass plug, I'll be using this. This was a solid brass doorknob. Nice big solid brass bar. And it happens to be just almost exactly the perfect size for what I need. So after this plug set up in the tube, I put it in the lathe and turned a rosette on it using the exact same method is turning the other rosettes. Polished it up. These I polished up, obviously enough, and then kind of formed it to shape. Two screws in front, two screws in back, 
and a number 832 hole, you know, drill the hole and then tap it and then put this 832 flathead screw in. So now this top is wrapped around, joined together, can't split open, and this pipe is captured quite nicely. So all we have to do on this main section is install our brass fittings here for the hinge. Now as far as this hinge goes, what I'm going to do essentially is we're going to line this hole with this brass sleeve. And then to retain this brass sleeve, this is 1 8 pipe threading. So I will thread this for 1 8 pipe thread and then cut it to length to the other side and then thread this piece to screw it on. All right, so there is the, the base or the mount for the hinge installed. Brass plate over here, brass plate over there. I glued it with wood glue, tightened it up real good, and then screwed it in. So this is all kind of locked in place. Can't rotate, can't move. And then here on this side, I've just completed the first hinge pin. And basically it's got threads on both sides. This side you will tighten down as tight as it can go. It will bottom out on these threads. And then this side I will hit with some Loctite blue, which is, which is very firm but not absolutely permanent. It will kind of turn this into a lock, a lock nut. And then tighten it in until it's got just a little wiggle and it's free operating but not clatter. So this hinge will be operating all metal on metal, nothing will be rubbing wood, and I think it should give many years of uh, trouble-free service. I have several kinds of wood finish that I've kind of gathered over the years, and one of the first things I reach for is this Jacobean color of this mid-wax stain. And it's a very vintage look, but it's, it's almost a medieval look. It's very, very old looking. And I'm not really going for that look. I, I think in my mind I'm thinking more about turn of the 20th century, not turn of the 16th century. Then I also tried this tongue oil finish, which actually is a real nice sheen to it, but it's very blonde. It's a little too 60s modern, uh, mid-century modern, and not uh, vintage enough. So, oddly enough, the way to get the truly vintage look that I want turned out to be the original authentic vintage finish, which is to say a couple coats of boiled linseed oil. This wood finish has been used for, you know, years and years. And what it does, it kind of just makes the wood look a little bit wet. There's a little bit of an amber color imparted, but mostly it just looks wet. And expand it out to the whole ladder. I think it's just right. I like how it sets off the brass. I like how it looks vintage and authentic. Over time, this will darken, and the older it gets, the more authentic it will look. So a little bit of time has passed, and here we have the ladder for the first time in a standable configuration. The folding brace is made with the same basic methods uh, and materials as the first part was. Drilled through here, counterboard the place for the you know for the brass uh, plate to set in use the mill and the DRO to drill these holes in this radial pattern the hinges are just heavy brass plate eighth inch brass plate uh, cut to size on the bandsaw sanded down on the big sander and then polished and then of course the fulcrum pin going through what was already prepared so final step I'll get some finish on this so it can be setting up and I will build the platform that's going to ride right here. So here we have solid brass. Uh, these are called offset studs. Uh, use it as a riser to get a circuit board up off of a surface. Nice little solid brass things. So I've just mounted a couple of them up in the lathe, turned them down to precisely six millimeters, 
and then I've cut them off on the bandsaw. Then I will saw a groove in here that a flathead screwdriver can, can go in so that these can be screwed in. I'm doing all that because these brass strap will go around this brass bar and pivot the platform to this brass bar. So the strap will have a slot and then this little brass stud will be protruding up through the slot which will prevent the strap from sliding left or right. Here we have the slot cut in these. So this will get cut on the bandsaw about right here. So I've now cut the platform to shape and glued and screwed this lower cleat on. These are the pieces that I earlier milled the slice into. I annealed them, that's why they're discolored. To anneal brass, you get it up basically to red hot and then dip it in water. And it then becomes real pliable. So these will go here and will serve as a strap to lock the platform to the bar. And those little brass screws that I made will ride in these slots and will keep the platform from sliding left or right. All right, so shot these screws in. This is now in its final position. The next thing is that we need to mark and drill in the little brass screw shafts that are going to go inside these slots and uh, keep this thing from sliding left and right. What I will do is I will put it fully in its down position and then drill it, uh, mark it and drill it in, 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 a, in one of the far ends of the shaft. And that way I know if it's in one of the far ends of the shaft, then it will have enough travel when it's in the fully upright position. And here it is with the platform attached and the two studs screwed in place. It can rotate up and down, but it cannot slide left and right. All right, so here we are in the home stretch. It is essentially complete except for the finish. I set the ladder on a level surface, drew a line and attached this cleat in place which establishes the spacing between the two brass bars when they're spread out. Then I took this piece of oak and cut a V-notch here so it can kind of straddle this shaft. And then a couple of thin pieces of brass strap wrapped around this to lock this to this shaft. And then bent these heavy brass plates into an angle and cleaned them up and then attached them to here. And what this mechanism does, what this linkage does, is establish a relationship, a distance relationship, between the bottom part of this platform and this brass rod. So that as the ladder comes open, the platform automatically comes down. So the platform then becomes a kind of a control surface when you have the ladder in place the platform has to be down and when you raise the platform up the ladder automatically folds with it and here we have the platform all finished up and installed based on some feedback I got from my wife I've rebuilt the platform itself instead of using repurposed oak flooring I just picked up some uh, oak and there's a single glue joint uh, right here and then rounded all the edges uh, put in the same tread grooves as the rest of it so that it you know kind of matches the profile of the steps that was what she said was most important is that with the square sides and the thin lumber the top platform was not matching the profile of the steps and she had a good point so here is the ladder from the back side and here's the ladder from the front. One thing of note is that it's perfectly safe to use the ladder in this configuration. You can just lean the top against something stable and climb up the steps as you wish. The ladder does not have to be opened out into a step ladder in order to be safe to use. It's very simple to use the ladder. To so fold it up, grab it by the top, lean it back towards you, and pull the platform towards you. Grab the top, push the platform down, and you're ready to climb. The physics of the ladder are such that you can climb to any 
level of the ladder with complete stability. You can put your feet here, put your knees up against there, and even lean against it pretty hard. You do not have any sense that you're going to tip over. I'm very pleased with how it turned out. I'm pleased with the look of it. I think that it's well constructed. I think that it's safe to use. I think that it should last a long time and hopefully bring some pleasure to whoever uses it. Designed and created with gratitude and respect exclusively for Dr. David Norris. Dr. Norris, thank you for the investment you made in me. Thank you for the investment you've made in the lives of hundreds of people like me. Doing this little project is just the smallest token that I can do to give honor to whom honor is due. And as always, thanks for watching.